so we're going to do the Green Party. Um, the uh, I actually, to tell the truth, I voted for the Green Party at the last election. I did vote for policies because um, I didn't know who to vote for. I felt a little bit politically homeless. Uh, I didn't know anything about any of the manifestos. I just went through it blind and it came out and I was something like 50 or 60% green. And I thought, well, I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't do it. So what was the point in going through all that? What's the point in then casting my vote in a different way? So I went and and, and cast my vote that way. Um, I probably wouldn't do that again. I did vote for policies again, and I'm now not a Green uh, Party voter. Um, so we uh, we shall see. But here we go. They don't have a main policies, so I can't just read off the list like the other parties did. And I know the Lib Dems put their whole... Uh, policy list in the, the main policies so i've just tried a little bit harder uh, to bulk out in subsections so they start off with immigration they want to end immigration detention unless it's a public safety danger they want to remove minimum income requirements for spouse visas and they want to provide safe routes for those fleeing persecution uh, on nuclear weapons and nato which is important for anybody who uh, has an eye on defense um investments obviously uh dismantle nuclear weapons cancel trident and remove foreign nukes the uk to sign the un treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons to increase focus on global peace building and to commit to a no fast use of nuclear weapons and on climate aid uh, it's to increase international aid to one percent of gross national income uh, by 2033 and to increase climate finance for Global South to 1.5% of gross national income by 2033. So I'll take a little pause there, Steve, because I understand we've got... Uh, that's a big topic in the middle, and it's probably something uh, a larger proportion of the UK w- would have supported prior to Russia um, invading Ukraine. Uh, at the moment, that policy is a bit of a killer in my eyes. What do you think? Yeah, it's a tough policy um, at the moment. It feels to me like where the Greens really stand out is in their their kind of raging optimism uh, about where they think, um, well, partly where they think they can get Britain to, but I think that requires a fairly raging optimism about where you think Britain is um, at the, the moment. I mean, even Rishi Sunak, who's been in charge for um, however long it's been, the Conservatives who have been in charge for much, much longer, um, even his kind of line is, OK, things look bad at the moment, but we'll, we'll make them better. Uh, the Greens, I think, to get to the kind of world in which you think, uh, which they're kind of describing, you have to think we're we're a lot closer to it than I think we probably are at the moment. I'm. Uh, by the way, I also once voted uh, Green. I should get this out of the way. It was not the last election. I was about 18, 19 at the time. It was when I first went to university. I did not vote for policies. Uh, a friend of mine was the... Was standing, it was a local election, by the way. Uh, a friend of mine was um, standing in it. I thought she'd do a pretty good job, so I voted based on personality. And actually, I'd kind of got into my head that she'd got quite a swell of support, so she might actually have a reasonable sort of shot at winning this. It turned out I'd spoken to like all eight Green voters, uh, more or less, and she got absolutely creamed, like the Greens always do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I have a record of having once voted Green as well. Even that seems... Like a tough set of policies to vote for at the moment for me, though. Yeah, completely agree. I think my green vote just about managed to get the guy's deposit back. So um, that that was something, I guess I contributed something. Uh, right, on social support. So these are big spending areas. Um, so pay attention to these ones, uh, even though they sound like small numbers. To increase universal credit and all legacy benefits by £40 a week to abolish the two-child benefit cap and to introduce universal basic income. So UBI, universal basic income, just for those who don't know, is basically where the government pays absolutely everybody in the country, regardless of what you do, uh, a set amount of um, money. This is uh, its an interesting topic. I've read a number of books on it. If you're interested on the science behind it, I can give you uh, a couple of interesting books to read. Um, one of them is by uh, a historian called Rutger Bregman, and it's called Utopia for Realists. Um, it's a really interesting book. There's a big section on universal basic income, and you will be uh, you'll be interested in how uh, how it was once applied and how how well it did. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it there and I'll shuffle on on housing. 
Uh, ensure new developments include local service investments, which is something we've spoke about before, Steve. Basically, if you're going to build 150 houses, you should be required to contribute to the local service and upgrade in the local doctor's surgery in the primary school and things like that. I think that's common sense. Uh, all new homes to meet passive house or equivalent standards. That's an air tightness standard for those who don't know. We've spoke about it on here before. Uh, it's an interesting standard. Um, you would need a, some kind of HVAC system to to replace the air in the house because it's, it's essentially airtight um to include solar panels and heat pumps in all new homes uh 29 billion over five years for home insulation to the epcb standard which is a high standard of home insulation four billion over five years for other building insulation nine billion over five years for low carbon heating systems provide 150,000 new social homes annually and a tenant's right to demand energy efficiency efficiency improvements from their landlords. And on democracy and human rights, replace first past the post with a proportional voting system, replace the House of Lords with an elected chamber, votes for 16-year-olds, and to invest $2.5 billion in renewing the court system. I, I, I just been there when I argue that's needed. Uh, Steve? Universal basic income is interesting. I've read a few bits and pieces on this. I haven't read a large number of books, but actually I've been much more impressed than I expected to be by the people um, talking about it. I found them refreshingly honest, both in terms of where they thought they had a case to make and where they didn't really know what the answer to um, some of the kind of challenging questions might be on that. Um, it's something that I, I think probably deserves more thought than it gets. It's very easy to dismiss it as inflationary because you hose money everywhere, then uh, inflation happens, right? Not really. I mean, the idea is that it's more a redistribution than a kind of introduction uh, of new money, at least as I understand it. Um Lots of good stuff for house building. Uh, it's an obvious sort of point here, but to, to look across at various other kind of manifesto commitments, I'd encourage anyone to look at these um, a bit more fully. It sounds kind of expensive um, and it feels like, OK, we want to build a lot of houses, but we also want to whack solar panels on a lot of them. Um, that feels like a sort of fairly expensive way of uh, building houses. And then we get into issues around kind of affordability. I get that. Um, housing is good, bad, otherwise for uh, various people and various different reasons. And people who own houses probably have a different bunch of interest to people who are aiming to buy them, especially buy them for the first time. But it's it's very much what you'd expect from the Greens so far, I think. Probably a fairly heavy emphasis on um, environment, energy efficiency, that kind of thing, uh, as well as some sort of generally fairly left um, bunches of policies. And of course, as a party who... Well, uh, not that I want to colour anyone's thinking, but let's say according to the bookies for the time being is very unlikely to win this election. Um, naturally, they want proportional representation. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to think as well, Steve, that um, with more 16 year olds being available to vote, uh, pop uh, parties like this potentially could become uh, um, more popular. Uh, just quickly on universal basic income, Steve, just because you touched on it, it was actually Richard Nixon who tried it uh, in America. There's a really interesting story of Richard Nixon uh, trying universal basic income. If you get a chance to Google that, I'll try and remember to put something in the description for you to check. But that is a crazy story. Uh, right, on energy, 70% uh, of UK electricity to be from wind by 2030 to deliver 80 gigawatt offshore, 53 gigawatt onshore, uh, that's wind, and 100 gigawatt solar by 2035 to invest in energy storage and efficient distribution, community ownership of energy sources, to cancel recent fossil fuel licenses and stop new projects, uh, to remove oil and gas subsidies, and to introduce a carbon tax on fossil fuels. Uh, they're pretty standard green policies uh, in my eyes. On the economy, invest 40 billion annually in the green economy, uh, introduce a carbon tax again. Public ownership of railways, water, and major energy companies. Invest 12.4 billion in skills and training for a green economy. Implement wealth tax on high value assets. Reform capital gains tax aligning tax rates on investment and employment income. Remove an upper earnings limit for national insurance. 
set up regional mutual banks and provide $2 billion annually for business decarbonation, uh, decarbonisation grants. So a lot of spending in there, Steve, uh, an awful lot of spending. Uh, I'll get another couple done, Steve, because there's a couple of short ones, and then I'll move back to you. Uh, on international to rejoin the EU, uh, to end arms sales to Israel, and on education, they want to abolish university, uh, university tuition fees, increase school funding by $8 billion, with $2 billion made available for teacher pay, and to abolish Ofsted. Um, there's a lot of things that people will like uh, in there, Steve, especially young people. Uh, but it is quite uncosted in terms of what, the, uh, what it would cost just to take the ownership of railways, water, and major en- uh, energy companies without really screwing the people who currently own those, that's an expensive kind of thing. And there's a lot in there that's expensive, isn't there? And there are some talk of adjustments to the tax code. Um, you, you're asking quite a lot of those, uh, I think. Um, the Greens are so far the only party that we've talked about, I think, that have been bold enough to say we would rejoin the EU um, and go the whole way towards that kind of idea. It's, it does sound to me like, and I don't wish to be unkind about this, a party unencumbered by concerns about winning uh, in this situation and having to um, uh, to kind of offer these sorts of, to actually do some of this um, stuff. Because the parties that think it might make a difference to whether or not they win, um, maybe, uh tend to have some sort of position on a spectrum of we would get ourselves closer or closer or further from um, the EU. We would not rejoin it. Um, Labour, I saw I saw Keir Starmer yesterday in the debate sort of saying they would like to align themselves closer and do better trade with the uh, EU, was a little unsure as to exactly quite what he would or wouldn't be willing to give away in terms of movement on the other side of that, because that's the likely cost of... Um, uh, better trade agreements uh, there, but it's all a much more kind of fine grained. We want to be kind of closer aligned like this, but not like this everywhere else, rather than a sort of straightforward. Um, eh, we just rejoin the EU. Easy. Yeah, they're as much as reform. Uh, are going to be your right-wing populists, green are going to be your left-wing populists, and populists make uh, quite a lot of promises and deliver on very little of, uh, little of them. They, they tend to be uh, damage-dealing parties rather than serious parties, and their their idea is to, to damage and punish the other parties uh, within their sort of like circle of influence. Um, and the reason they make outlandish claims like this is because they know that they never have to deliver them. They're never going to be accountable for them. And when they do accidentally win, they tend to disappear uh, and not deliver on them. And it all goes terrible. And nobody really understands why. And the reason why is because it's not feasible. It's just not feasible. Um, and here's some more. Uh, so they want to implement, uh, this, so this is under the WAC segment, sorry, implement a 10 to 1 pay ratio. And this just means that if you're a cleaner, uh, your boss cannot earn 10 times what you earn, more than 10 times what you earn. Uh, if the boss wants to earn uh, an extra 10 grand, he has to bump up your salary by a grand. Uh, raise minimum wage to £15 an hour. Equal employment rates from day one. And to move to a four-day work week, where do I sign? Uh, on health, guarantee access to an NHS dentist and GP, boost NHS staff pay and restore junior doctors' pay, increase primary medical care by £1.5 billion by 2030, invest £3 billion annually in NHS dentistry by 2030, access to evidence-based mental health therapies within 28 days, and to legalise assisted dying. Uh, on caring, they want to introduce uh, free personal care, Increase pay rates and career structure for carers uh, on arts, sports and culture. Invest $5 billion in community sports, arts and culture. Uh, remove VAT on cultural activities. Limit media ownership to 20%. Implement all of the 2012 Leveson report reforms. On animals, create a commission on animal protection. Ban blood sports. Protect marine life. End badger culling. End factory farming. And to ban close confinement and unnecessary mutilization. Uh, mutil- mutilation, sorry, of farm uh, animals. And I'll just quickly shoot through the last three, Steve, because cutely we're running out of time and we need to do one more. Uh, on transport, increase subsidies for rail and bus travel to 10 billion, 
free bus travel for under eight teams, invest 19 billion in foot cycle, uh, cycle paths and electrification, public ownership of railways, increase local control and funding for bus services, 50% of trips in towns and cities to be either walked or cycled by 2030, introduce a frequent flyer levy, ban domestic, short domestic flights, halt all airport expansions under nature, end the sewage discharge by taking all water companies public, expand access to green spaces with the right to roam act, protect 30% of land and sea by 2030, ban bee-killing pesticides and enact a, uh, a clean air act and on agriculture and farming. They want to triple financial support for farmers to transition to green farming, improve biodiversity and soil health, reduce pesticide use, provide a free school meal daily to all children, free breakfast clubs in all primary schools, uh, include food growing, food preparing, and food cooking in the curriculum, reduce food waste. And at the bottom of it, uh, they just signed it off with, uh, we are prepared to borrow to invest. So just in case you tried to do the math on that and it didn't work, uh, they're going to borrow it. Um, and that's your lot, Steve. Yes, but we're going to invest it as well, which means that we will eventually presumably pay it back using the proceeds of our investments. Look, there was some stuff to like uh, in that, I thought. I quite like the idea of the NHS and the idea that it needs more investment. It, it really tells you kind of what the the very obvious choices are when you see pretty much uniform agreement, even from your um, outlier parties with sort of fairly mainstream um, stuff. I mean, they're a bit more radical than... Uh, than any of the major parties, but you would expect that as for reasons we've kind of harped on a fair bit here. Um, free bus passes for under 18s, sure. Um, I I don't much have a, a view on a lot of these things. Oxford basically is a giant cycle path at the moment, and it's nearly impossible to drive a car anywhere uh, through the city already. So I don't suppose we would notice any difference like that. My sense is it makes the place worse, not better. So I don't think that's um, a particularly welcome development uh, more broadly. I don't think you should welcome this in Hull if it becomes the case uh, up there. But I think um, just with a bit of an eye on the clock, I am struck by how how very different uh, all of that is to uh, the Reform Party that I was looking at this time. But um, Steve, any last thoughts on the Greens? Um. It's it's just yeah it, it it it's a young person's portfolio uh, uh, manifesto isn't it it's a, a manifesto to make people young people excited to to vote for them um, but th- there's a very very slim chance of any of that being delivered on. Yeah, I think that's probably right. I think in a lot of cases you can define parties a little bit by who they're opposed to. So in the case of the Labour Party, it's very obvious what they're opposed to is well, mainly non-DOMs. Uh, and their rough idea is that they're going to pay for everything by closing non-DOM tax loopholes. Um, but they are they do not mind pitching themselves firmly and squarely against that. Um, the Greens are not so obviously um, opposed to basically anything uh, apart from, uh, I mean, they didn't actually make a big thing out of windfall taxes, for instance, on um, oil and gas. I mean, they're clearly anti that stuff, but their idea is that we'll just borrow and build all around it um, uh, rather than kind of uh, going on the attack uh, there, which is sort of interesting. Uh, Steve? Just just before we do shuffle on to reform, Quick, mm. quick story, uh, in the that's that's maybe got a little bit of national attention. Is my old local MP Carl Turner was in the news recently uh, talking about when he was doorstepping and getting a load of abuse from one guy uh, who didn't believe that we should be taxing condoms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Uh, anyway, he, he he explained to him that he meant non doms and what that meant, and then yeah. all of a sudden was, was quite was quite was quite in favour of it. You've been watching a segment from the Playing Footsie Show, brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading212. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out on the link in description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.